and a whole lot more. Tune your clock radio to 710 AM and wake up to Cairo News Radio 71. Because no one else quite stacks up. Cairo News means more investigative reports weeknights. Last week, Hydro Racing turned demolition derby. The Bud and Eagle tangled. Then Mike Hansen's Kellogg's boat went airborne. What can we expect in Seattle? We'll have a race preview. We'll also go dry land racing with a very familiar figure, Chip Hanauer. He's still driving, only now it's without water wings. Plus, we'll ride with the mini boats and show you all the do's and don'ts of Hydro watching next on Seafair Saturday Night. and welcome to Seafair Saturday Night. I'm Monica Hart. Well, now that all the preliminary festivals, parades, and parties are over, we turn our attention to the big show. You know, Seafair Sunday is the biggest event of the year. 250,000 people will line the shores and log boom around Lake Washington, baking in the sun and cheering for the Thunderboats. Now, this show tonight is all about those boats from the fastest to the slowest and everything in between. So, let's get to it, all right? Here are your qualifiers for the 1991 Rainier Cup. Miss Budweiser ran at 200 miles an hour down the straits and qualified at more than 155 miles an hour. The Winston Eagle is second at 152. And is this golf or boating? Hey, the Super Range Golf qualified third, and the American Spirit is fourth. Now here's a creative name. Listen to this. The O oh Boy Oberto Wild Waves KUBE Pork Jerky Boat. Talk about a mouthful. They are fifth, and the edge shaving gel Hunan Harbor is sixth. Okay, now for the bottom half of our list, the KISW Miss Rock, the Jackpot Food Mart, Oberto's other entry, the Oh Boy Wild Waves KUBE Beef Jerky, followed by the Miss T Plus Hyperlube, and yes, we must have bowling here too with the Miss Go Bowling. And if the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes team can finish repairs stemming from last Sunday's blowover in Pasco, they will be here too. You know, every boat is different, different colors, styles, and engines. But one thing remains constant in hydro racing. Steve Rabel shows us the real reason we're still able to cheer for the hydros on Seafair Sunday. Got a spare $1,000? Why not buy yourself a star on the American Spirit Hydroplane? For 5000 you could advertise your business. For a few thousand more, claim a tail fin. Or several hundred thousand, you could own the boat. Welcome to Unlimited Hydroplane Racing, where winning isn't nearly as important as advertising. We don't go out and qualify at 155 miles an hour. I'm not certain that we could, but I think we could get very close. We don't try, because if we break engines and blow up engines or hurt the boat or tip the boat over, even worse, we would do our sponsors a major disservice. Ron Jones Sr. has reason to watch out for his sponsors. Over 50 of them have staked out a plot of fiberglass on his American Spirit boat. The more they pay, the better the play. If you'll notice the Vlasic name, which is a little further forward and on the cowling of the boat, but it's done on dark black on a white background, and of course it stands out very well. And we noticed this from uh, pictures. We learned from photographs from a distance how these things play. And there are certain sponsors that obviously have contributed more than others. Hydroplanes have always been loud, fast, and flashy, but nowadays they can also satisfy your shopping needs. Everything from bacon to screwdrivers to your recommended daily allowances. For many boats racing today, multiple sponsorship has become a survival technique. In order to keep up with the Budweiser, now you got a million and a half dollar budget. We'd have to sell a company to do that. Art Oberto is running two of his old boy boats this year, one for the beef eaters and one for the pork lovers. And so we're going to do our market testing out there and see how the pork jerky is going to do with the beef jerky. And we'll test it out on the lake and see how it goes. Budweiser and Winston have remained dominant sponsors in unlimited hydroplane racing, while so many others have dropped out, leaving all that floating billboard space up for grabs. People who run the slower boats began to sell boat space like magazines sell half and quarter pages. For them, the strategy has saved the sport from extinction. But it happens to be an excellent way for a low-budget team with 
just zero inventory to start with nothing and become a player on the tour. The American Spirit Team donates all their ad proceeds and half of their winnings to charity. Looks good for the sponsor and looks good for the boat. I think you have to be a half a boataholic to be in boating anyhow. If you looked at it strictly from the dollar and cents standpoint, I don't think anybody would be in boating. In the old days, things were simpler. All the Thunderboat needed was a Bardall or a Smirnoff to stay afloat. Radio announcer Mike Fitzsimmons built and painted these 140th scale models as mementos of racing's early years. But today... Well, some of the boats can get 30, 40, and 50, and 60 decals, and I can tell you this, uh, it's a good thing <laughs> that I do old boats because I, I couldn't possibly have the patience to put that many names on some of my models, I don't think. <laughs> Patience is what it takes, especially if you're delicately applying oil-based enamel. Not so important if your medium of choice is a marking pen. But then, Miss Rock can barely afford a spark plug, let alone a fancy schmancy paint job. Gary Ebert has hand-painted and laid out all of the Miss Bud's lettering and decals since 1979. And that's a lot of gold leaf, paint thinner, and removable decals. The boats don't always survive, but the paint jobs do. And that has to keep the sponsors happy. And of course, some boats change sponsors in almost every race, picking up local advertisers in different cities every week, so it's kind of hard to keep track. So what will the well-prepared hydro fan take to the races? Now the really important stuff. Next up, we'll have all the do's and don'ts of watching the big show. Then coming up, we'll catch you up from the first race in Hawaii way back in November to last weekend's Crash Mar Tri-Cities race. It's been a hydro season full of great races, excitement, and controversy. A look at the first five events and much more just ahead. Sinclair Saturday Night is brought to you by Fred Meyer Stores, a Northwest tradition for over 68 years. By Kits Cameras, trust all your important pictures to Kits. By your Puget Sound Honda dealers. Celebrating Seafair with limited time, special lease savings on Civic four-door sedans now. By Southland Corporation, 7-Eleven. By Texaco System Free Gasolines. Texaco, star of the American road. By U.S. West, helping you manage the business of life through advanced communications products and services. U.S. West, making the most of your time. And by Valvoline. People who know, use Valvoline. When you buy Valvoline motor oil, you get quality, high performance, protection, and now, for a limited time only, great taste. It's Valvoline's 125th birthday, and right now, when you buy 12 quarts of Valvoline, and buy 12 cans of any Coca-Cola product, we'll pay for the Coca-Cola product. People who know use Valvoline. With other motor oils, you just won't get the great taste of Coca-Cola Classic. All right. Now, you didn't get an AM, PM sports bottle because you didn't know they were just 99 cents. But we're going to be good sports. And just bring in any sports bottle, especially this one. And we'll give you a refill of Coca-Cola or any other soft drink for only 49 cents. And if you don't have a bottle yet, we'll even give you another chance. Fill up for much less at AM, PM. Cairo TV and House Operative want to send you to New York in the Change in Taste sweepstakes. Look for official entry forms at participating retailers and register to win. Here's your chance to win an exciting vacation in New York with tickets to the men's finals of the U.S. Open, plus two Prince Storm rackets and travel bags courtesy of Sturdivant Sports in Bellevue. You'll stay at New York's Huntington Hilton Hotel. Register for the Cairo TV House Operative Change in Taste sweepstakes today. Watch the final drawing on Wayne Cody's Locker Room Show, Sunday, August 11th. You've just taken some important pictures. Now, where do you take your film? A supermarket, a drugstore, or the one place that guarantees the best prints? Kits Ultra Prints from Kits Camera's own Ultra Print Lab. Using special century paper, Kits Ultra Prints are guaranteed not to fade for 100 years. So don't take a chance. Bring all your important roles to Kits Cameras. For the pictures that really count, Kits is the picture place. Welcome back to Seafair Saturday Night. Well, all the boats are dockside, and the Stansayers' pits should be fairly quiet right now.
But there is only one way to find out for sure. You know, KPLZ is the official uh, Seafair radio station, and we are happy to have Kent and Alan. Uh, Alan, Alan, what are you doing? You're laying down on the job there. We're, we're working hard, Monica. We're hard, <laughs> hard, hard, hard Monica. Hard, hard. Yeah. Hard, hard. <laughs> it is a beautiful night out here tonight. Sunshine, there's a nice breeze blowing, and a lot of people out here just enjoying the weather in anticipation of the big race. You know, we've been doing the race for about 10 years, Monica, and earlier today we went out, we're walking through, they've got the food booths and everything else. Something's happened over the last few years. The kids are all coming back to the races. You see lots of families out here, all kinds of neat family activities while you're racing. Lots of food, lots of everything. We're just in the pits here, and you were wondering about the uh, Kellogg's Tony the Tiger boat, so I had a chance to talk to the pit crew, and I asked them how it was going, and they said, great! Ooh. I, you know what else has been interesting that I like about hydro racing? You look at the boats, you see them going around. Unlike any other racing, you know who the sponsor is. You know yeah. who's sponsoring it's, that boat. It's spelled right out for you. We are here, though. We have a role to provide vital information to you about the hydro races. You see, there is a right way and there's a wrong way to watch Seafair races. Meet Mr. Dew, the utmost hydro authority. Mr. Dew is the perfect hydro fan. He finds an out-of-the-way location to watch quietly and comes prepared with all the essentials for a great day at sea for Now meet Mr. Don't, the most uncourteous, obnoxious, and rude hydro fan around. In fact, Mr. Don't is totally unprepared in here just for the party. Mr. Dew has settled in. A nice hot day calls for a little thirst-quenching beverage. Just the right drink for the right occasion. Ah, but Mr. Don has also brought some liquid refresher. Meanwhile, Mr. Dew passes the time between races by calculating some of the variables in hydro racing rules. He knows there is a scientific probability in determining the race winner. Ah, Mr. Don't also passes the time during intermissions. He's an old hydro prankster from way back. Hmm, getting a little hungry on the dock, I'd say. Yes, it's hard work keeping track of the miles per hour of every boat, both in the races and anchored on the log boat. Hmm, mighty tasty, I'd say. Mr. Don is going gourmet all the way. I hope he brought some napkins for that fast food disaster dog. Mr. Do is intense. Mr. Don is also paying attention to everything except the races. And finally, it's almost over. Mr. Dew can see the boats coming to the finish line, and it's over. But who won? Mr. Dew, who won? Well, maybe Mr. Don't knows. Oh, well. Have a nice nap. Mr. Dew, Mr. Don't. Boy, that uh, chili dog looked good, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, Come oh, on. it was great. You know, the great thing about the races are, if you're out having fun somewhere else and you don't know who won, you can always watch TV or a radio and find out. We'll be back shortly. We're going to talk to the person, the key individual that puts on the race here. Coming up. All right. Thanks, guys, for the uh, do's and don'ts. You bet. When we return, we'll uh, take you back to the hydro pits where some of the boat crews are still working, trying to get ready for the races. And we'll also bring you uh, an update on the hydro's version of Demolition Derby. You know, the past two races have been costly to the sport's top two boats. You'll hear from the drivers and owners when we come back. News doesn't stop for the weekend, and neither should your 24-hour news source. At Cairo News, we're expanding our weekend coverage with the area's only fully live newscasts Saturday and Sunday morning. Three hours of live coverage from 6 to 9 a.m. on Saturday, and again at 6 a.m. Sunday, followed by CBS Sunday morning at 7. Giving you the inside track with the most local news on the weekend. Cairo News on Channel 7, your 24-hour news source. This is the 1991 Honda Civic four-door sedan. One of car and driver's 10 best cars in the world for the past five years. And this is a C-First lease designed exclusively for the 1991 Civic four-door sedan. 
What a beautiful combination. One of the world's best cars at one of the lowest monthly payments in recent memory. See your Puget Sound Honda dealer today. But hurry, the special lease program ends soon. This is Rick Fernier. He's got a 7-Eleven store in Toledo, Ohio, where he's a baseball fan. So you gotta figure that a guy like Rick makes a pretty decent hot dog, gets a quarter pound big bite from Oscar Mayer. And all the chili and cheese you want is free, cause it's a free country. So if you're a big baseball fan, or even if you're not, but you want a good hot dog, stop by for a quarter pound big bite at your 7-Eleven. The sign of the time. Do you know right now a quarter pound big bite's just 99 cents? Well, it is, so come on in. Man, talk about gutsy. Stepping up and picking off that line drive. We better have a doctor take a look at that finger. Where am I gonna go on a Saturday? Hmm, some of the guys at work have used Czech medical centers, and they were pleased. We didn't have to wait. The doctor really knew what he was doing. What a relief to find out it was only a sprain. And they even had us out in time for the pizza party. Czech medical centers, now open Benson Hill, Renton. We're back. Who won the thunder on the Ohio? Where was the first race of the year? And how many times have the Bud and the Winston boats collided? Wayne Cody tells us in this look at the 1991 season. Ah, yes, what a vacation paradise. And what a sight for the first race of the season. Or wait a minute, is it the last race of the season? Well, it's tricky, but basically, this year's first points race was last November's party at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. And what a day for racing. No complaints about boring heats here. Perfect conditions, fast boats, close finishes, the name of the game. They're heading down now on the final straight. Tom Deep looks and sees the checkered flag ready to wave. George Woods trying to find a power, but George Woods, oh, oh, just a little bit too much too late. The final race, on the other hand, was not close. The Winston Eagles' day-long starting problems finally got the best of them. They left the Budweiser to battle the Ovoy Alberto, but it really wasn't a battle at all. The beer boat left the sausage in its wake, running away with the first URC event ever run outside North America. Now it's 1991. It's Detroit, Michigan, and it's the Gold Cup. A lot can happen between October and June, and in this case, it's musical boats. Almost every hydro has a new driver. Most notably, Scotty Pierce taking over the Miss Bud, while Tom Deep recovers from this. Charlotte, North Carolina, watch the middle of your screen. Deep running the pavement has no place to go but through the number 84 car. He suffered a fractured vertebrae and is out for the season. On the water, it was a day of mistakes. The edge boat can't keep its top on tight. The Winston Eagle flips its lid. And the Bud sits floundering before the first all turbine final in history. Scotty Pierce did restart, then he jumped the gun. That's a no-no and a lap penalty. Meantime, the Winston Eagle apparently runs just as well without a cowling and without the Bud to worry about. It's a fairy tale finish. He is a hometown driver from the Detroit area. Mark Tate wins for the first time ever a championship heat in the unlimited hydroplanes. And needless to say, his dream has come true. He has won the unlimited Gold Cup. Stop number three, the Thunder on the Ohio, Evansville, and the first flag start in recent hydro history. The format makes for great excitement and super starts. No chance to jump the gun, and that was just fine with Pierce and the Bud, who cruised to a first heat win, despite leaving part of the boat in the river. 80,000 sun-baked fans then watched the Bud and the Winston Eagle battle in the final. Now in lap number four, it was a four mile an hour difference between the Miss Budweiser and the Winston Eagle. Winston Eagle actually was riding in second place, four miles an hour faster. Will it make a difference? They're into the final turn on the course here in Evansville, Indiana. Second flag time. Let's watch as they come down for the finish. Scotty Pierce finds a little bit more power. Mark Tate trying to catch him on the outside, but it's checkered flag time for Scott Pierce in the Miss Budweiser. Winston Eagle finishes second. Hydro racing in Madison, Indiana isn't a sport. It's a tradition. 
Their first race was in 1911. And how many towns can boast owning an unlimited hydroplane? Madison can, but it's been 20 years since their native son crossed the hometown finish line first. And it probably wasn't in the cards today. The Bud and the Winston are clearly the class of the field, but they're also clearly too close together. Somewhere in that flying mist, they tangle. Parts fly from the Bud. The Winston is penalized, and that leaves the American spirit to battle the Miss Madison. Here's your winner. This is the American spirit, Mark Evans. Look at him in the cockpit reacting with the waves to the crowd, bobbing his head back and forth. What a finish for this crew. Second place and a big cheer from the crowd for Mike Hansen in the Valvoline Miss Madison. Could it happen twice in two weeks? The Tri-Cities is a long way from Indiana, but not far enough for Scotty Pierce. This is the damage. And here is the culprit. For the second straight race, Mark Tate in the Winston Eagle crashes into the Miss Bud, and the beer boat is the loser. It took every piece of tape on the Columbia to patch it back together. But the second heat fender bender was nothing compared to this. Fourth lap of the five lap final, Mike Hansen's Kellogg's Frosted Flakes boat goes airborne. The boat suffers major damage, Hansen just minor aches and pains. But it was enough to stop the race. And the Winston Eagle was declared the winner. And the Budweiser camp, they could not believe it. They penalize him one lap for bearing out on you, find him $300, and that's ridiculous. Well, he's just uh, having trouble controlling the boat. That's, uh, you know, he took the sight out of us in Indiana. He hooked the boat up there. He hooked it again here. So something's got to be done about it. Well, we had lane two in the draw, but by the time we got it into the boat, they decided we had lane three. I mean, who did? The referees told me, no, you don't have two, you have three, he's got two. <laughs> so that ain't enough that they run over the back of the boat and take it out of the race. You figured out. And there's a look back at the 1991 season thus far. Well, stay with us because no woman in history has ever ridden in a turbine-powered boat until now. Plus, no boat has ever qualified using an old PT boat engine. Will that happen at Seafair 2? These guys have certainly given it the old college try. Can the Miss Rock team ever get their boat running this year? We'll tell you when Seafair Saturday night continues right after this. As your car ages, it may need higher and higher octane to perform like it used to. But there is a gasoline specially formulated to control this higher octane need while providing the highest level of engine cleanliness, Texaco System 3 get great performance in every octane grade. Still think all gasolines are the same? Right now, while you're lost in the sweetness of one of life's simple pleasures, you're not thinking those grapes are NutraClean certified with no detected pesticide residues. What's this? And that's okay. You just keep on enjoying the foods you love. And we'll keep on bringing you NutraClean certified produce. Fred Meyer, for people who love great food and lower prices. Ernst sells more home improvement products than anyone in the state of Washington. And it starts right here, our warehouse. Ernst buys in huge quantities. So you always get the right price, guaranteed. Add this buying power to the reason shoppers have been choosing Ernst for nearly 100 years. Like our full selection and the helpful advice of our friendly people. And it's clear why Ernst is number one. Sure, Ernst has a warehouse, only we don't make you shop in it. Ernst! Always the right price. Always. Always. To be a loyal friend, a loving parent, a citizen who leaves his home and town better than he found it. Neighbors working together, making the Northwest a better place. Recognizing outstanding commitment to our community, President Bush has awarded the employees of Cairo Incorporated one of our nation's highest honors, the Point of Light Award. Welcome back to Seafair Saturday Night. Oh, the trials and tribulations of small teams trying to compete with the big boys. You know, that's been the case for one of the most popular, yet least successful hydros around. So enter a possible savior, the old Packard engines once powered Navy PT boats, but they've never been successfully adapted to hydros. 
still, this team is hoping that will now change. This isn't the Cleaver's house, and Wally and the Beeve are nowhere around. But there is a homegrown operation here. Behind the facade, there is work going on. Work to ready the underdog for its 1991 debut. this madness in about 78 and uh, they'll just keep doing it as long as there's something to, something to work on um, I'd sure like to win a race before it's all over fourth place is the best finish we've been able to muster Jack Berry is driver crew chief and public relations man for Seattle's longtime sentimental favorite and the Miss Rock is his baby Jack works eight hours a day at Boeing's every day and comes up here for five hours every day after that. Works or sleeps? If, if every driver did what Jack Berry did, nobody would drive. <laughs> There's not another driver out there that spends, that has a full-time job, 40 hours a week, all year round, and comes up and, you know, and works. The guy comes up here five, five hours, four or five hours every day. We're talking through the winter. We ain't talking just one month a year, you know. <laughs> Um, so, so, if the Miss Rock is to actually see its first race action in two seasons, Jack Berry will have spent a lot of sleepless nights. When we replaced the deck over there, it got set back a little bit, so the strap was going this way, so it was pulling the counter back. The Miss Rock has become the subject of every hydro joke around, and Jack has heard them all, but... Uh, it doesn't bother me at all because, uh, you know, uh, this is where the true boat racers are in my opinion. Car racers, it doesn't matter, you know, everybody does it. You gotta start someplace, but, you know, if you, you machine your own parts, you build your own boat, you work on your own trucks and everything else, and if you do it all yourself, to me, that's a real, that's a true racer, you know. And I think you can see by the operation here, I mean, we're not primitive by any means. Just the past couple of years, trying to make the pack work, we've had a little bit of bad luck. So, I mean, I think you're going to see a big change this year. Last year in Pasco, Barry made it off the dock five times, and five times he went dead in the water. This year, their modified Packard engine tested well, and though catching the turbines is not likely, there is mounting optimism. Well, there's no doubt about it. I mean, we're gonna, but for the Pistons, we're gonna have the most cubic inches. And I mean, we, right now, we can't run with the turbines. Uh, but this Packard has the potential of running with the turbines. But under the new racing format, I think, uh, well, there, there's really no doubt we'll be in the slow boat heat. And considering the boats that are in it, the Packard runs as well as it did during testing, I think we'll be right we should be right in there with Mitch, if Mitch is in that heat, and, and Hop, and, and the car engine boats. I think we'll be right in there. Oh, well, there's always Seattle. Back to the shop. It just takes time to perfect them and get all the bugs out. And uh, hopefully we got it. I think we got it. So maybe this will be it. Maybe the time has come for this backyard team to rise to victory. Victory in Seattle doesn't have to be on the winner's stand. That's right, maybe this time. Well, now for the updates. Scrap the Packard. It just wouldn't work, so they worked all night on Thursday working on installing a Merlin engine. Friday, the Miss Rock, Miss Rock rather, qualified at 106 miles an hour. Now let's uh, head back to the pits because if the Miss Rock wins the Rainier Cup, it could be the biggest upset in hydro history. And one man will be the happiest in the world. Jack Berry, are you ready? I'm ready. You're ready? Jack, what drives you? I mean, the odds are, are against you here. You know that. What drives you and your crew? Uh, for the, the love of the sport, and we all love to go boat racing, and ju we just happen to have an underpowered situation right now, but that always can change, and you get a break here and there, and you end up in the winter circle, and that includes Miss Rock. What can be done to um, level the playing field, to make it, it easier for others to win and be competitive in the sport? 
Uh, well, we got boats on, on each end of the spectrum, and I think we got to draw them closer together to get some parity in the sport, because, I mean, there's no way we can run with Budweiser, but uh, maybe some new corporate sponsors coming in and, and even this thing out a little bit. All right, Jack, we wish you the best of luck, and we'll keep our fingers crossed for you. Thank you very much. All right, see you tomorrow. Well, stay with us for more Seafair Saturday night, because if you think the unlimited boats fly across the water, just wait till you see their baby cousins. They are one eight.